reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with heavenly spiritual blessing in heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, that he set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time, he gathered up all things in Christ, 
things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hopes on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Stand to receive our gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. King Herod heard of the healings and other miracles, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John. Knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and asked her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his own and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. <coughs> this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Well, they're asking, 
what is the good news in the story? And believe me, I have been asking that question all week. Though it may not be obvious at first, I do think there is some good news in there. John the Baptist is faithful to what God has called him to do. He is preparing the way for Jesus the Messiah by calling people to repentance. If people can recognise their wrongdoing and turn away from it, which is God's life giving ways, they will find the path to true fulfilment, peace, and joy. And they'll be more ready to recognise the Messiah when he comes. John is a courageous man. <clears throat> he is not afraid to speak the truth to power. Herod Antipas, who is one of Herod the Great's children, was made ruler of the region of Galilee after his father's death. And as our story tells us, he fell in love with his brother's wife. Divorced his own wife and persuades Herodias to do the same so that he can marry her. And John is not afraid to challenge his behaviour. Herod has broken the Jewish law by committing adultery, especially with his brother's wife. And Herod does not like the fact that his relationship with Herodias is being called out. But he is fascinated by John and what he's teaching, and he does realise that he is a godly man. <coughs> His compromise is to put John in jail to stop him speaking out publicly against him and undermining his authority. This also gives Herod the opportunity to go and visit John in prison and to listen to what he has to say. Herodias is furious with John for criticising and humiliating her in public. And she wants to kill John, but Herod refuses. She's jealous of the deep respect and fascination that Herod has for John. And then that fateful day arrives where Herodias can extract her revenge. The wine is flowing at a birthday party, Many important officials have been invited. Everyone is a bit drunk. And Herodias' daughter dances for Herod. And he's so delighted, he offers his stepdaughter anything she wants up to half of his kingdom. And as it says, Herodias, her mother, tells her to ask for the head of John the Baptist. Herod had made an oath that was binding and at that time to go back on it would have humiliated him and lost him the respect of all those high-ranking officials that were at the party. And so in turmoil and grief, he is forced to consent to her request. If only Herod had listened to the compelling words of John that him so much, if he sought repentance and healing, how different the outcome of the story would have been for everyone. It's little wonder that when he hears about Jesus' ministry and miracles, Herod thinks that it was John the Baptizer who had been resurrected from the dead. He was a man riddled with guilt and conscious because he knows that he murdered an innocent man. easy to think that John's short life wasn't completed, that he didn't achieve all that God had set out for him. But his life had a huge impact. He launched Jesus into his messianic ministry through baptism and preparing the hearts of others to receive Jesus. Throughout history and still today we see people martyred for their faith, for challenging injustice, for speaking truth to power. And John's life demonstrates that all that we do that is good and true will reap a harvest. For 
How can we do in life that promotes peace, kindness, forgiveness, justice? No matter how small that act, it will reap a harvest. We have a choice in life. Herod had a choice. The Catholic evangelist Matthew Kelly says, Life is about saying yes to the things that help us become the best version of ourselves and no to the things that don't. Herod and Herodias chose their path with all its destructive and devastating consequences. John the Baptist chose his path, even though it was costly, with life-giving and life-changing consequences. Do you know what John's death was not the final word? Though we didn't realise that at the time, Christ's death and resurrection would one day open the door to John's resurrection. The scripture tells us that Jesus will return and establish the eternal kingdom in a renewed heaven and earth, which is infused with his presence and peace, where there will be no more suffering, pain, or death. Here we will all be resurrected into a world where power no longer oppresses the powers where the rich no longer exploit the poor. A world where justice, equality, peace and love will prevail. Paul tells us in our Ephesians reading that as God's adopted and beloved children, that is our hope. And the Holy Spirit within us guarantees us of that inheritance. Life is tough when we lose someone we love. The Holy Spirit reminds us that God is with us and the best is yet to come. So may John's example inspire us to say yes to all the things that help us become the best version of ourselves. Yes to love, no to hate. Yes to forgiveness and no to revenge. Yes to peace and no to violence. And may we be encouraged that our life-giving words and actions, no matter how small or costly, will always reap a harvest and will always change our world for the better.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. You promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Keep your church called to be your messenger on earth and the channel of your grace in faithful service to the gospel. Defend her in adversity and give to your priests and ministers courage to witness in word and deed. Heal divisions amongst Christians. Bless and protect those around the world who are persecuted for the sake of the gospel. Bring them assurance and your strength, such that they remain steadfast in faith. Bless and strengthen Bishop James, as leader of your church in Cumbria, and Mandy, Jim and Alan, who enable our services to take place here at St Peter's. And bless and strengthen our mission community leaders here in Whitehaven, as we work together for the future of your church in our community. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Turn the hearts of those who misuse their power over others. Bring hope and freedom to the places where people live in fear of tyranny and injustice. And grant that we shall live in peace with all of those around us. God of hope, give us courage to overcome our own fears and speak boldly of all that you have provided for us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As we have been made members of your family by adoption, bless our human families with your continual presence. Guide us to follow the way that you have prepared for us in all our relationships with others. Bless all who care for loved ones, and we thank you for those who work in our local health and emergency services. Give strength to those who volunteer to help and support others in these challenging times, and to those who give their time and talents to support and improve our community here in the parish of St Peter. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort those who are unjustly imprisoned and those who have been brought by human judgment into the shadow of death. Have mercy on those whose faith is clouded by doubt and who walk in darkness. Be their strong defence in times of need and keep them from harm. And we each bring before you all those we know who are ill at this time. Through our prayers, may they know your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those who have died violently at the hands of others. Grant them the peace that was denied them at their end, and bring them to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. May your saving love avail for all who have passed through this world and into the world beyond. Hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Merciful Lord, be close to all who mourn the recently departed this day. May they know the comfort of your love. We pray in the name of Christ, by whom we are raised to new life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning, and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of God and night, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. It is the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and he gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to him, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for your coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is found. Christ is given. Christ is Through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, with songs of everlasting praise. Blessed be the honor, glory, and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father. Near with faith, 
receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Now, the 